Okay, it says we are live. Thank God, thank God, thank God that we are live today. Well, everybody, I tried my best to uh, preserve my voice today, uh, but I had a lot of meetings at work, and I could not preserve my voice as much as I wanted to, so I do have my water uh, right here, so you may have to uh, just kind of indulge me and let me take some water at different times in order to preserve the voice that I do have left. I don't want to clear my throat continuously uh, during our time together. I say that as I just cleared my throat. But in any case, today is June 6, 2022. And I want to thank you all for being here. This is a very important uh, teaching as in the days of Noah. Oh, we got my cousin Ken here. All right. Bless God, Ken. I'm glad you're here. And we got my mother-in-law here. All right, Sister Alice. And we got the first lady here. So we got a full house, which is good. Thank God. I'm glad you guys are here. Let me go back in here and just go ahead and remove that. But I want you to know that uh, this teaching is very uh, important. I know you may have heard different uh, teachings on as in the days of Noah. But this is a teaching that I really couldn't wait to give you because of it's okay thank you thank you honey. <clears throat> because of what is going on in the world uh, my heart is going out to all of these uh, victims of mass shootings and their families I'm going to talk about that today but just let me uh, let me have you just clear your mind uh, of uh, everything that you are experiencing right now and just be attentive to this Bible study for right now okay uh, because I do want to help you make sense of the time that we're in. The Lord has given me a whole bunch of teachings that I have to do, uh, and, and this is one of the first ones, but let me just start, and I want to be mindful of the time, so let me start, and let me just open it up for, pray for prayer. Father, I thank you that you always do hear us when we pray. Lord, I ask that you would take over this teaching tonight. Father, I pray that the time that I spent putting this together was not only worth it, but that you will get your glory behind this. Father, I bless everyone here. I bless their family. Father, I bless all of their loved ones in the name of Jesus. Lord, I speak safety and, and security to everyone here, everyone represented here, all of their extended family and loved ones. Lord, open up our hearts and minds to receive this teaching in Jesus. Jesus name, Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let's just see. Hey, we got Sister Willa here. All right, Sister Willa. Hey, we got my sister here. All right, Sharice is here. Thank God. I know we can start now. I got Sharice here. So uh, let's go ahead and, and let me uh, let me get going. So as in the days of Noah, what am I talking about here as in the days of Noah? I want to start off with Matthew chapter 24. Jesus was talking and Jesus was saying that when a son of man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's day. He said in those days before the flood, people were enjoying banquets and partying and weddings right up to the time that Noah entered his boat. Everyone, there is such a, a comparison between Noah's day and ours. The, and I'm going to bring these out at different times. But the people back then, they were doing whatever they wanted to do. They were not thinking about what Noah was preaching for 120 years. And yes, Noah was preaching what was going to happen to the world. He did that for 120 years, and he got no one to believe him but his family. Now, this is the rapture. People didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away. OK, that is why I mean, that is the way it will be when the son of man comes. Jesus was saying Jesus said two men will be working together in the field. One will be taken and the other left. You know, it, it's amazing uh, that I, I look at this. I was talking to First Lady Victoria and I was mentioning I'm not concerned on where you stand uh, with this, but I want to talk about maybe for the last time when Will Smith slapped uh, Chris Rock. I know you've probably heard it until your ears want to fall off, but I bring that out for this example. No matter who you think was in the right, or who was in the wrong. Isn't it amazing that on national TV, we saw a man get up and slap another man and 
half of the population in this planet, I don't know the exact percentage, but there is a division that some people don't even believe one person was wrong and ha the other population doesn't believe any the other person was right. And so, what well, Tony, what's your point? You know, you've got some people who were on Chris Rock's side and you've got some people who were on Will Smith's side. What is your point? My point is we were and are divided on that issue. So, of course, two people will be working together. One will be taken, one will be left. What I'm showing you is there is division in this planet right now, even on a topic of a man slapping another man on national TV. We're divided on that issue. It's not just politics, it's not just classism. So if we're divided on the slap of a human being, we're divided on issues of Christ, of the rapture, of Christianity. So it really hit me to look at this, that, yeah, that's how one person will be taken, another person will be left. Jesus went on to say that two women will be grinding flour at the meal, you know, at their job working, and one will be taken and the other left. He said, so you too must keep and watch because you don't know what day your Lord is coming. This all goes back to Noah's day. Those people had no idea that God was coming to judge the planet. They had no idea. Even though he kept telling them for 120 years, they had no idea. Hey, we got my dad here. Hey, how you doing, Pop? We got Sister June here. Looks like a flood in Chicago right now. All oh, be careful out there, Sister June. <laughs> be careful out there. So this is what Jesus was talking about. Now let's examine and talk about the man Noah. Okay, let's let's just let's just talk about Noah. Noah, the, the man's very name means to rest or to find relief. His ma his name means rest. He's called one of the heroes of our faith. He saved mankind from total destruction from the flood. Okay, he's nine generations down from Adam. Now, when Lamech was 182 years old. He became the father of a son that he named Noah. Why did he name his son Noah? He said, may this child bring us relief from our work and the painful labor of farming this ground that the Lord has cursed. Now keep that in mind. There's a lot of comparisons there. Noah, his dad said, may, him, may this child bring us relief. After Noah was 500 years old, he became the father of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now, Noah lived at a time when the entire world was filled with violence and corruption, yet this did not ruin Noah's fellowship with God. That's where we are. We're in a world full of violence and corruption, but it's, it should not have anything to do and ruin our fellowship with Christ. The Lord told Noah and warned him about what was going to happen to the planet and how the planet was going to be judged because of the wickedness of mankind. So you tell me, believers, hasn't the Lord warned us through his word, again, through his word, his written word, what's going to happen to this planet because of the wickedness of mankind? God told Noah the ark was going to be the one and only way to protect uh, against his judgment against the world. What does that ark remind you of? What is the one and only way to protect you against God's judgment and wrath? Exactly. Jesus. Noah obeyed God and built the ark as he preached about the coming judgment, and I still can't believe this, for 120 years. During this time of what's called God's grace, that's where we are right now. You see, even though some people try to say that the Lord is judging the earth and COVID is God's judgment, September 11th was God's judgment, God is not judging the planet yet, and I'm going to show you where even Peter talked about the coming judgment. But right now we are in a time of God's grace, but not one person believed him. Okay, it says only his wife, three sons, and their wives were saved from God's judgment. So that's talking about the man Noah. Let's look further in Genesis chapter 6 about how the world at that time had gone wrong. 
So Genesis 6 starts off with people really began to multiply on the earth and daughters were born, obviously. And there's a term called the sons of God. I don't want to get into the sons of God right now and the Nephilites because there's a there's just a lot of uh, speculation and, and a lot of argument, even against uh, theologians, about who were these people. So I'll get into that in another teaching, but just go for the terms right now. Sons of God noticed that these women were very beautiful and they took them as their wives. And it was a wicked thing that they were doing. So God said that my spirit won't always put up with humans for a long time. They're mortal flesh. And in the future, they won't live past 120 years old. So in those days and for some time after, people sometimes don't remember that portion. In those days and for some time after, giant Nephilites lived on the earth. Now, again, some people have called these Nephilites to be angels. Uh, honestly, I have a problem calling them angels because uh, my only theory of angels not being able to impregnate a woman, even if they come into uh, human form. But that's something that you know we'll find out sooner or later. The Bible never really made it clear. If you look up the word Nephilites, it'll mention giants or very renowned, famous, strong men. But anyway, they were not of God. They, they were not um, godly. I'll put it that way. So these ungodly beings, men, whatever, lived on the earth. And whenever they had intercourse with women, they gave birth to children who became what the Bible calls heroes and famous of ancient times, of ancient times. When you have the terms uh, heroes and famous, you know what you have? Heroes are power. They've got, they're very powerful. And famous, they're, they are well known, full of fame. So in the days of Noah, very powerful and famous men were being birthed by women and they grew up to be very ungodly. So these are ungodly, powerful and famous men of ancient days. Now let's get to another portion of Noah's day, the violence. This violence was so bad that it had reached the eyesight and the ears of God. The Lord observed, and I'm still in Genesis, the Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the planet. And he saw that everything they thought or imagined was always evil. He was sorry he ever made people and put them on his planet. It says it, it broke the Lord's heart. And God finally said, I'll wipe this human race I've created from the face of the earth and I'll destroy every living thing, all the people, the large and the small animals, even the birds of the sky. The Lord said, I'm sorry I ever made them. Now, here's where we are. The Bible says, but Noah found favor with the Lord. That is where we are. Even though this world is in corruption, even though you've got people, what they said that this past weekend, there were over 12 mass shootings. Think about that. Over this past weekend, there were over 12 mass shootings. A mass shooting is defined if four or more people are shot. Not necessarily dead, but if four or more people are shot, that equates to be a mass shooting. There was over 12 of them that happened over this weekend. But we have found favor with the Lord God. He's not happy at these mass shootings. Let me continue. The entire planet was destroyed by water. Now, that's something where people say, yeah, I get that. It's no big deal. But from where? And I want to know how many of you have read this and maybe you read it, but didn't read it. <laughs> okay. Let me, let me put it this way. Let me just show you Genesis chapter one, uh, verse six through 10. Then God said, let there be a space but between the waters to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. Now, let me explain this to you because this is what the Lord had to show me. And I, I even I have missed this many times. See, when we've seen documentaries on how the planet was formed, either from people claiming the Big Bang or even from Christian television, they always form and they have a, a, an image of a planet and you see land. That is not how the planet Earth came to be. This entire planet was nothing but a ball of water. If you, if you think about it now, um, what is that? Um, Jupiter is all gas, okay? When you have a planet, the Bible says Earth had no form. You know, water 
and when it's free moving has no form. So the entire planet in the Bible says it, let there be a space between the waters to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. And that is what happened. God made this space to separate the waters of the earth from the waters of the heavens. So it was nothing but a big ball of water. And God called this space. Now that there's a space between this water, he called it sky. The evening passed and the morning came marking the second day. Let me continue. Then God said, let the waters beneath the sky flow together in one place so dry ground may appear. Now we see, okay, so water is not going to just have its way all over the planet. The Lord wanted the waters to flow together in one place. And that's what happened. And God called the dry ground land. And where the waters finally gathered together, he called that seas, lakes and oceans. And God saw that it was good. Now, let me jump down to Genesis uh, chapter 7, 7, 11 of all the of all the places that never closed. Chapter 7, 11. Uh, when Noah was 600 years old, on the 17th day of the second month, all the underground waters erupted from the earth. You see, Noah is trying to preach and tell people, look, I know you've never seen this before, but I'm building this big boat. You see, and water is going to come from the sky and under the ground, and it's going to flood the whole planet. And they were like, what are you talking about? Now, keep in mind, how did the Lord water the earth during the days of Noah? It was dew. There was dew that would form on the grass and, and over all the ground coverings, but it never did rain. And you never had these torrents of rain. You never had rain coming from the ground. It was there. And it would, had always been there, but God kept it there. Man, it, it was crazy for mankind at that time to believe that Noah was going to make any sense. So it says that uh, all the underground waters erupted from the earth and the rain fell in mighty torrents from the sky. And it continued to fall for 40 days and 40 nights. Please keep that in mind. If you're taking notes, keep what I'm saying in mind. Because... We are in the same day, but it's not going to be water that destroys the planet. So now let's continue. And now you who are born again, now we're getting to us. Okay. Now this is us. The name of Jesus literally means to deliver, to rescue. Jesus is saving mankind from total destruction and from God's eternal judgment. Okay. So again, I'm just looking at a comparison with Noah and with Jesus. Jesus is saving mankind from God's judgment. Matthew 1.23 says, look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Before Jesus, God was not with the people of the planet like that, like he is now. Now, what I love, look at Matthew 11.28. And Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you what? I will give you rest. What did Noah's name mean? Noah's name means rest, relief. Jesus is saying, I will give you rest. Okay. So again, here's a great comparison. And I haven't even gotten to the, the crux of what this message is, because part of this message, I need you to preach this to the world. What I'm going to show you today, you may have never seen this before, but the world needs to know this. So please take notes or just take what I'm saying, you know, to heart. So Jesus walked the earth when the church was embroiled in scandal and corruption with politics. We already know that great civil unrest was among the people. We already know that in the days of Jesus. And he was in all points tempted like as we are, yet Jesus never committed a sin. So all of these things going around Jesus, yet he wasn't caught up in sin. That's where we are. Okay, we're all around violence and corruption, but we are called not to commit sin. So we are a we're warning people about what is going to happen to the planet and how it's going to be judged because of the wickedness of mankind. Do you know how many people don't believe in the rapture? I mean, you're trying to tell them, okay, let me get this straight. 
there's going to be a day when all these people that believe in Jesus, they're going to disappear and fly away. And then it's going to be seven years of, uh, you know, three and a half years of peace like we've never seen. And then three and a half years of hell on earth. And then uh, Jesus is going to come back to the planet and he's going to cast the devil into hell for a while. And then Jesus is going to reign on the earth for a thousand years. And after a thousand years, he's going to let the devil loose again. And then the devil's going to be loose, but then he's going to, you know, put the devil and, and this false prophet and this antichrist you talking about in, in hell, then he's going to have this white throne judgment and he's going to judge everybody who, who didn't, believe in Jesus, he's going to take everybody in hell and put all of that in what's called a lake of fire as he destroys this planet by fire. Are you serious right now? They, it, it, it's going to sound crazy to people. It already does sound crazy to people. But see, just like Noah telling people how, hey, one day I'm building this boat, and if you are not in this boat, there's going to be all this water. It's going to destroy the earth. And they were like, all right, so let me get this straight. Something we've never seen. We've never seen it rain. We don't even know what rain is. How do you spell rain? So some water is going to fall from the sky. And, and all of this crazy water is going to come under from under the earth and you're going to float away. And if we believe you, we get in this boat with you and we're saved. Man, get out of here with that. That is how, what Noah had to go through for 120 years. That's what we're going through now as Christians. The word of God tells us that Jesus is our ark and he's the one and only way to, to be protected against God's judgment against this world. So what am I telling you? We have to obey and continue to obey the Lord's word since the ark has already been built and delivered to God. So all we're doing now as Christians, we're waiting for our ark to pick us up. But keep preaching about this coming judgment during this time of God's grace. And don't stop, even if one person doesn't believe you. You know, when I was writing this message, I told myself, you know, if Noah went through what he went through for 120 years and not one person believed him. You know, I think I can continue doing this on Facebook or YouTube and, and I get invited to preach at churches. You know, I can do this for the next 10, 15, 20 years, 30, 40 years. If Noah did it for 120, bless God, I can do it for another 50 years. Now let's talk about our world that has gone wrong. Okay. Just look at this. So just like in the days of Noah, remember I talked about the sons of God with the daughters and the Nephilites. People right now are multiplying on the earth and our normal lifespan has been no more than 120 years. So I'm still echoing Genesis. In our day, women are giving birth to children who are becoming very rich and very powerful and very famous. So what do you have? Again, you've got powerful, rich and famous people. Now, I won't, uh, what, what I won't do anymore is I won't mention uh, uh, names because I've, I've, the Lord had a conversation with me and, you know, sometimes I can really get into my own flesh and want to mention names of people I think aren't doing what's right. And the Lord had to let me know, you know, you don't know who's going to get born again. And you didn't just mention this person's name all over the internet. And so I'm going to stop doing that. Um, but I will say this much, just as in the days of Noah, you've got people here who are very wealthy who are very famous and they're trying to find ways just like in the days after the flood to live forever and i mean that literally i've i I've saw a documentary of a man who's right now in jail who was doing all he could scientifically to live forever and and they don't want to live forever in heaven with jesus cuz they're they're not you know christians and they're they're really not very nice people they're very corrupted um but that picture you see, that money, that money is what is keeping them in their head and in their hearts. I have to live forever. I don't want to give up being rich and powerful and famous. So we are like in the days of Noah, where there are very powerful and rich and famous people who are ungodly, completely ungodly. The violence of earth has reached God, just like in the days of Noah. There's a ton of violence. The Lord continues to watch the extent of human wickedness on the planet. Look at the mass shootings I just talked about. But those who are born again in Jesus, just like Noah, we have found favor with the Lord. Okay. Again, that is where we are as in the days of Noah. 
Let me continue. The planet will be destroyed by fire. Everybody, just so you know, this, what I'm about to go into right now, this is what made me do this teaching. I had a conversation with somebody and I'm like, I have to, I have got to teach this. Before with Noah, the planet was destroyed by water. This time it is going to be destroyed by fire. Let me know if you've ever read this before. Because Peter wrote this. Second Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Let me read this. And I had to start with verse 1. Peter said, this is my second letter to you. And I've tried to refresh your memory of what the holy prophet said long ago, what our Lord and Savior commanded through your apostles. Most importantly, to remind you that in the last days, scoffers will come, mocking the truth and following their own desires. They'll say, whatever happened to that promise that Jesus was coming? From before the times of our ancestors, everything hasn't uh, it, it, it's remained the same since the world was first created and Jesus is still not here I had a conversation with someone not too long ago and I had to ask them so do you believe in the rapture still or no the person told me no I don't I don't believe in the rapture anymore you know this person told me it was coming this one said it was coming and Tony it ain't come here yet so no I don't believe so people are getting this way now that's not why I did this let me keep going Paul, uh, Peter said, they deliberately forget that God made the heavens. Now, I'm going to say this slowly. I'm, I'm too excited. Let me slow down. They deliberately forget that God made the heavens long ago by the word of his command. And he brought the earth out from the water and surrounded it with water. Then God used the water to destroy the ancient world with a mighty flood. Okay, Tony, what's your point? My God, my next point is the next thing Peter said. Peter said, and by the same word, the present heavens and earth have stored up fire. This fire, they are being kept for the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed. I never taught on that before. I'm not going to say, and I will say it, I've never heard anybody teach on that before. And I thought I've read First and Second Peter enough, but it didn't hit me until this time I was studying this this past week. Peter said by the same word that God used to destroy the earth by water, the present heavens and the current earth, everybody, the heavens has stored up fire. We just don't see it, but God sees it. And this fire is being kept for the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed. You see, this is, again, how are we in the days of Noah? Noah was trying to explain to the world, to ungodly people, everybody, there's a day coming where you're going to see this water come from the sky and destroy this planet. And they were like, you have to be off your rocker. You, you've got to be crazy. You try telling somebody right now who's ungodly. You know, there's water. I mean, there's fire stored up in the heavens that's going to be used to destroy ungodly people. They're like, okay, uh, who are you? What, what what are you smoking? Thank you, Sister June. Yeah, you know, and you, you're like me. I, I thought I've read that, but I never saw that before either. You know, and I thought I really did a good job of studying uh, Second Peter. And that's why I like putting verses on here. This is now I'm not I'm not all the way done. I don't want to stay here because I'm not done yet. But this is what I need you to help teach and, and witness to the world. Because, again, if you see this, you're like we, in fact, are living like in the days of Noah. They didn't believe Noah about all that water and they aren't going to believe us about this fire. And the book of Revelation talks about the fire falling from heaven and people right now today, June 6, 2022, there's fire in heaven being stored up for the day of judgment. Let me keep going. So I want to show you the comparison as in the days of Noah. We talked about the man Noah. We talked about the man Jesus. Noah had a world that gone wrong. We have a world that's gone wrong. There was violence on the earth that reached God in the days of Noah. There was a violence on the earth now that has reached God. The planet was destroyed by water in the days of Noah. Our day, a planet, our planet will be destroyed by fire. What I'm getting at, nothing more must be accomplished before the rapture. Just if I, if I quote my savior and my king Jesus, it's finished. The rapture could come at any moment. There is no event that needs to happen before the rapture. That's proof enough.
Now, I have a message, and I want you to see this, okay? Because I, I, I know I'm, I'm getting short on time, but just bear with me for like another two or three minutes. If you're witnessing to somebody who's not born again, just give them these two points, okay? Just just talk to them about this, because I have a little spe special message. For those who are not born again, just got two points for you, among many I could bring out. But here's point number one. Now, that's just a regular coyote. As a matter of fact, uh, First Lady Victoria, we have seen coyotes in our neighbor walking down our street about two or three times a week. Yes, it's, they're becoming more and more uh, vis visible uh, because of the heat out here in L.A. They're starving. But here's my point. Genesis chapter 9, verses 1 through 2. Did you know this, everybody? Genesis 9, it says, Then God blessed Noah and his sons and told them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth. And God told Noah, all the animals of the earth, you know, all the birds, all the small animals that scurry along the ground, and all the fish, they will all look on you with fear and terror. They will be in fear of mankind. I've even given, I've even placed them in your power. I've given them to you for food, just like I gave you grain and vegetables. So, Tony, what's your point? Everybody, God said that he put fear in these animals. You know, we haven't, we, we, we saw these coyotes and Victoria can tell you that they were a, a coyote seen one of the neighbors and ran the other way. Why did that coyote run from that neighbor? Because God put fear in that coyote. God put fear. The only reason why we get attacked, where people get attacked by animals, because either they're afraid and they've been cornered, okay, or some other uh, circumstance. But God put fear in animals so they could be afraid of mankind. Tony, what is your point? We are in the day of grace. When God told Noah this in Genesis chapter 9, it was during the day of grace, which is still right now. People, do you know that when the rapture takes place, the day of grace is over? What does that mean, Tony? That means that this fear that even this lowly coyote has of mankind is gone. I want the ungodly to understand you may not believe the book of Revelation where it talks about how many people are going to die. Let me explain to you, there are going to be so many people who die, but the Bible does not give an estimate of how many people are going to die from getting eaten by wild animals. You see, the reason animals don't eat you, the reason why this coyote now isn't walking around attacking human beings is because he's got fear in him that God put him in there through this day of grace. So you're looking at Okay, he said all the animals of the earth, the birds. We had when the last time you, you heard of a bird attack, attacking a baby, attacking a human being, all the small animals, the rats and the possums and the raccoons and whatever else kind of animals that scurry along the ground and all the fish. Okay, I know piranhas, you know, are, are man eaters. I know that sharks can attack if they're in fear and what have you. But just imagine all of these animals no longer fear you because the day of grace is gone and humans have never lived in a time of what I'll call Jurassic Park, where Jurassic Park, all these would be dinosaur animals are trying to kill and eat the humans. That is what the day is going to look like when God removes the day of grace and the fear that these wild animals have towards humans is removed. That's point number one. I don't want to just stay there, but that that even boggles my mind. So let me can, let me give you point number two to give to somebody who says they don't want to become born again. If they don't believe in the rapture, they don't believe in in, in the animals, you know, all of that, what I just talked about. Look at point number two. OK, here's point number two. NASA, which a lot of people cannot argue with. NASA says something strange is happening with our universe. This article was written May 22nd, 2022. Let me just show this to you, okay? Because I want you to know this is not some Christian conspiracy website. This is ABC News, okay? And if you Google something strange happening with our universe, if you want, just Google that and you'll see a lot of things. But this is right here, May 22nd. 2022, NASA says something strange is happening with our universe. Let me go down and read this to you. It says, 
They say the expansion rate has become much quicker compared to expectations. What are you talking about? What I'm talking about is it says that you're getting most precise measures of the expansion rate of the universe from the gold standard of telescopes and cosmic markers. Tony, what are you saying? Basically, what's going on is that NASA says something is strange is happening and that our universe is expanding. But what does that mean? Observations showed other galaxies are moving away from our Milky Way faster than they ever have before. You're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. So what does that mean? Okay, scientists cannot figure out why. And all they're saying for now is that something bizarre is underway. Tony, what is your point? Let me keep reading. The cause of this discrepancy remains a mystery, but Hubble data, which is the telescope, encompassing a variety of cosmic objects that serve as distance markers, support the idea, this is NASA talking, everybody, support the idea that something weird is going on, possibly involving brand new physics. So if you were to put this into, into easy terms, Tony, what are you saying? We are part of our, our Milky Way, okay? Just like if you say, hey, my cousin is in Arizona, okay? He's in the Arizona, part of the, the West. There are, and, and our Milky Way would be the West, for example. Galaxies are moving away from us. So do you understand if you could take America and you could say Texas and New Jersey and Florida are moving away from Arizona? Tony, what is the big deal? Exactly. If that doesn't, because when I read that, it hit me. If that doesn't, you know, scare, I hate to use the word scare, but if that doesn't bother you, let me explain this to you. NASA said something is strange happening, brand new physics. Tony, what's your point? And I have it, I've been put on here. What could this mean? Let me explain this to you. Now we got to get back to being biblical. You see, Revelation 20, verse 11 says, John said, I saw a great white throne and the one sitting on it. The earth and the sky fled from his presence, but they found no place to hide. What I'm getting at is the galaxies, all of the entire solar system is aware that there is something happening with God in the third heaven. And you see, the Bible says that the earth and the sky fled from God's presence. Tony, what is your point? What I'm getting at is, is that this is not for the rapture that the solar system is, is getting, and this never happened before, that the galaxies are, are moving away from us, okay? I'm talking about the rapture has to take place, the first three and a half years of peace, then the last three and a half years of tribulation, okay? Then the 1,000 year millennial reign. Now, after the 1,000 millennial reign, then there is this great white throne judgment, but the galaxies, everybody, is getting ready now. They're starting to leave us now. Does that, does that shock you? I mean, does that do it for you? Because I want you to be able to teach this to the world and to be able to let them know, okay, if you don't believe in, in the coyotes, you know, that the, the day of grace is going to be over, can I at least interest you in science? You can't argue with the fact that NASA is saying this is bizarre. Some new physics we've never seen. And I think it started, I think a year or two ago, that the, the solar system is talking. Galaxies are moving away from us. It didn't say they were coming towards us. It didn't say that they were moving away from another nebula, you know, 15,000 trillion light years away. No. These galaxies are moving away from us. And they're only doing that because there is going to be the face of a very angry God who is going to be sitting on that great white throne who is going to judge the planet. And the Bible tells you right here that they fled from his presence and they found no place to hide. It's already starting. This is why I had to do this teaching to let you to give you some ammunition for those who are not born again to help me teach this. I try to give you enough uh, proof that I can and documentation to let you know this is not my, you know, my opinion, but I've got documentation here from NASA and then from uh, the Bible. <laughs> I couldn't think of the word. I get so excited of what is going on.
So there are signs. These are signs. And I have a little quote here from a truck driver. You know, the signs are always bigger the closer you get to your destination. You know, you see that big welcome to California sign? You don't see that big California sign when you are about 300 miles away from California. You know, you get that sign on the top. You get the little, okay, Flagstaff, Grand Canyon is this way. L.A. is this way. And Albuquerque, New Mexico is this way. You know, you don't get that. And so the Lord is showing you, even the truck drivers understand, the closer you get to your destination, the bigger the signs are. And what I'm trying to get you to, to help me teach the world is all of this is not a coincidence. All of these signs are showing you how close we're getting to our destination. You can only halfway explain some of these and, and chuck them off as being a coincidence. But after so long, you got to wonder, wait a minute, all this stuff is happening for a reason. Yes. And amen. Now, for those that are watching me. And you're not born again. Have I shown you enough? Like my cousin is saying. That for this you have to have faith. And stay grounded in the word of God. Have I shown you enough? Have I done the, 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 the research? Have I heard from the Lord enough. To get you to trust Jesus. With your future. And no. You don't want any parts of that. You don't want to have to worry about. If the local coyote or possum. Or or, or, or raccoon is going to attack you. You. Imagine. I know if, if, if you're hearing me. And you're not born again. You may feel like I'm bad. I'm tough. I'm mean. I, I'm this. I know you may be bad. I know you may be cool. You may be tough. But let me tell you something, you are nothing compared to an entire solar system. And if an entire solar system is trying to run away from God and, and what they think, they evidently, they can feel something. This solar system can smell the coffee. I know you think you bad, but a solar system is trying to run away from God as fast as it can. But you know what? It'll find no place to hide. When God shows this face of how angry he's going to be when he is judging the ungodly. Don't forget, when you're born again, you don't get judged. It's only the unsaved, the ones who have not received Christ, who are going to be judged. They have to look at an angry face. What will we be doing during the white throne judgment? We are going to be with Christ at the um, wedding, at the wedding supper. And we are going to be given our our gifts, our crowns that we have deserved from our work here on the planet. So what sounds better to you? I know you bad. I know you cool. I know you, you, you've been through hard times. But would you rather be trying to face an angry God that even the entire solar system is trying to run away from? Or would you rather be having a party with us and getting a crown of life for all of your troubles? What would you rather be doing? Think about that. Like my cousin Ken said, don't forget Romans 8, 28. God works it out for those who love him. Amen. He does, Ken. So if you think you've heard enough and you're like, I want to make this change, then repeat after me. Lord Jesus, forgive me. I repent of my sins. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I accept the price you paid for my freedom, your death on the cross. I believe you rose from the dead, and I am forgiven of my sins. My name is written in the book of life, and I am rapture ready. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer, we believe you got born again. OK, which means welcome home. Welcome to the family of God, as my cousin is going to come on here and say, you made the ultimate decision because Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice. OK, you prayed that prayer and you meant it from your heart. You don't have to worry about coyotes, worry about the white throne judgment. You have now passed all of that. You are going to be with us. You'll be 
you know, rocking and rolling with me as I'm right there next to Jesus getting my crown. For, and hopefully I won't have bald head when I get to heaven. I, but, you know, if I do, I don't care. But it's OK. But you are you've made the best decision you actually could. So let me do this before we go, because I have to bless all of you. And, you know, and it, it's amazing because I will tell you something that, you know, kind of hit my head when I first started doing the the Bible study, the Monday moments in time, I didn't used to do this blessing. You know, I, I uh, first lady can tell you it, it hit me one day and I told her the Lord is telling me to start blessing everybody after I get done teaching. You know, and I, I was obedient. I just started doing it and I didn't know why. My God. Over the weekend, like I said, over 12 mass shootings. Bless your family. OK, even don't wait till Monday. Bless your family when you wake up. Bless your family as they go out. Bless your friends, because I tell you, like one preacher was saying, I may not can stop the bullet that's going to hit. But two things. We are not going to live in fear of going to Walmart or going to church or going to school. We're not going to live in fear. And you know what? If that bullet happens to strike us, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We are right there in heaven. So it pays to stay ready. But we're going to get this blessing. OK, so here, be blessed. As I give you this blessing, the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you. Thank you, Jesus. And behind you and beside you all around you and within you. In the morning, in the evening, in your coming and in your going, in your weeping and in your rejoicing, for he is for you. We bless you, everybody, in Jesus' name. We thank you for this Bible study. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that we have uh, completed another, another Bible study. Father, I pray for every individual here. I pray for their safe journey, wherever they're going. I pray for their families, for their friends, for their loved ones. And Lord, we even take the time out to pray for our enemies, Father, because nobody needs to be shot down and shot dead going to do their everyday daily routine life. Lord, not at all. And we come against that spirit right now in the name of Jesus, Father. We thank you and we take authority over this demon that has been unleashed. And we call it done right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, everybody. Well, hey, God bless you. Thank you for being here. Um, I know already that the teaching is going to be about Jesus next week uh, because there's some things that I have seen uh, that is uh, that is coming. Uh, all right. God bless you, Sister June. God bless you. You received that blessing. Thank you. So uh, unless the Lord tells me otherwise, I'm, I'll do the teaching on on on. It'll just be Jesus, because I have seen what the enemy is doing to confuse people about Jesus and about uh, his uh, second coming. So in any way, God bless you. I will let you go for now and uh, keep me and Victoria in your prayers. We feel those prayers, so keep them coming. We keep praying for y'all. We God bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs>